Now I want to be treated equally to his other children. That's it. The old King Albert II made a mistake that a man would make when he was young, so he had an illegitimate daughter, Delphine Bowl, but the old king's disregard made the mother and daughter extremely annoyed, especially when Delphina phoned Albert II, but she was rejected and he said, never call me again. I don't want to see you again, and you're not my daughter. So, how did she become a princess after years of mistreatment? But before we get started, this may be the last time you see this channel. So hit the subscribe button for more stories in the future. Let's begin. Before 1999, the king and queen of Belgium seemed like characters from a fairy tale. Albert II, who was then the second prince, appeared dignified and imposing. Queen Paola came from a noble family and was considered the most beautiful person in Italy back then. They almost instantly fell in love when they first met. Just two months later, the prince introduced the future queen to his family. Within four months, they made their relationship public. After eight months, they had a big wedding that was celebrated by the entire country. They have three children together. In 1966, he met Delphine's mom, Miss Sybil. The two met when Albert and Queen Pola were on vacation in Athens. Sybil was also from a noble family. Her dad was the Belgian ambassador in Greece and her mom was also an aristocrat. They had had a love relationship for over 10 years. Their relationship stayed a secret in the Belgian royal family. The royal family stopped the media from telling anyone until Sabil got pregnant. At that time, Albert was still a prince. He didn't think it was a big problem. He even suggested he could divorce Paola and marry Sabil, but this idea didn't happen in the end. When Sabil was going to have a baby, Albert often visited her. He brought her flowers, took care of her while she was pregnant, and was even there when the baby was born. Sybil once told the media, it was a wonderful time. He was always very kind to her. During that time, Albert and Paola even started the process of getting a divorce at one point. Sybil didn't want to cause trouble for the royal family or harm their image. On the other hand, Paola didn't want the royal family to take her three children away and separate them from her. When the royal family secretly suggested to Sybil that she should disappear, she moved to London with her daughter. But Sybil didn't see any issue with this suggestion either. She took her daughter Delphine to England and continued her relationship with Albert. Albert used to visit young Delphine and would send her birthday cards and flowers every year. In 1982, when Delphine was 14, Sybil and Albert broke up. No one knows why, but after that, Albert didn't keep in touch with Sybil or Delphine. A few years later, Sybil got married again, this time to an English nobleman. Delphine grew up in a wealthy family. As she got older, she decided to study art and went to a famous school called Chelsea College of Art and Design in London. She graduated with top honors. In 1999, something else happened that caused a problem. An unofficial book was published about Queen Paola. This book talked openly about the king having a mistress and an illegitimate daughter. It also said that Queen Paola had been unhappy about this for a while. This made a lot of people in the country really upset. Right away, the Belgian royal court said the rumor was just boring gossip, but people didn't stop being upset about it. Later that year, Albert mentioned it in his Christmas speech. The Queen and I have had a very happy time and remember the crisis we went through together 30 years ago. We have overcome these difficulties together and have found long-lasting love and harmony. Recently, we were reminded of that period of crisis. We do not wish to discuss this further as it belongs to our private life, but we are also comforted if such experiences can give hope to others in similar predicaments. Albert said nothing about Sybil and Delphine, he just referred to them vaguely as a crisis. As the rumors spread, Sybil became seriously ill. Delphine already knew that her father was the king, so she had to contact Albert. However, on the phone, Albert told his daughter mercilessly, never call me again. I don't want to hear any more about this justice stuff, 
and besides, you're not my daughter. Delphina and her mom, Sybil, got furious. They started shouting where other people could hear, wanting King Albert the second to officially say that Delphina was his real daughter. Delphina also talked to the media about her life. She said, my mom and Albert the second were together romantically for a while, even though he was married. I'm the proof of their love. When I was a little kid, Albert was a prince. He used to visit us a lot, and he cared about me and supported me a lot. The media is bringing up the old story again, and Delphina is also causing problems in her art world. She created a painting called Predictable Vulgarity, which shows how her parents' beautiful love story has become something vulgar. Delphina wrote a book about her life, saying, I'm not the one who did anything wrong. It's the secret relationships. The king is treating me like something he wants to hide and throw away, but that's not right. Her mom, Sybil, also stood up for her. She talked about their experiences over the years and said, mom and daughter aren't allowed to meet the royal family or be seen with them, but Delphine isn't responsible. These are things that adults deal with. If anyone is to blame, it's him and me. No matter how Delphina questioned it, the royal family always insisted that it was all vicious gossip, and the king never responded. So, in the capital of Belgium, under the eyes of the king, Delphine held a painting exhibition that satirized the king. Never give up. Delphine's art exhibition was so unexpected that it amazed all of Belgium and made the royal families in Europe uneasy. Because of this, people from all walks of life came to see it, and even some officials visited privately. In 2013, Albert II quit being king because of his health. His oldest son Philip became the new king. Once Albert II was no longer king, he could be charged with crimes. Delphina then used the law to fight for her rights and prove her true identity. Delphine took her case to court and asked Albert II to give a sample of his DNA to prove they were family. To fight against her lawsuit, Delphina didn't just wait in the courtroom, she was on her way to court. She always said she wasn't doing this for money or status, but to get an explanation from the royal family. Even if the judge said her case couldn't proceed, she wouldn't give up and would keep pushing forward. Albert II said many times that he wasn't Delphina's father and didn't want to give his DNA for a test. Then, in February 2019, the court in Belgium finally decided something. They told Albert the second he had to give his DNA within three months. If he said no and didn't give it, he would have to pay a fine of 5,000 euros for each day he refused. There was no other choice, so Albert II had to say yes to doing a DNA test and gave a bit of his saliva. When the test showed he was really her biological father, the Belgian court, in October 2019, officially said that Delphine was indeed Albert II's daughter. This ended a seven-year fight about whether he was her dad. Afterwards, Delphina went to court again, asking for the same rights as her royal brothers and sisters. In January 2020, the court in Belgium decided that Delphine, like the other legally acknowledged children, could be called a princess and also had the right to inherit from the old king. After many years of feeling sad, 52-year-old Delphine finally got to meet her father, 86-year-old Albert II, in the castle. It was their first time meeting. The daughter who wasn't recognized as a princess before is now a real princess. But after more than 20 years of being treated badly and seven years of long court fights. Why do you think Delphine kept fighting for her identity and rights, even after facing mistreatment and denial for years? We'd love to hear your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Don't forget, in the world of fame and secrets, the stories never fade. Catch you on the scandalous side. Thank you for watching.